It is Wednesday, my dudes, and you know what that means. That's right, it is time once again to revisit Velocity Lake, the Planet Coaster series I upload every single Wednesday, and in which I showcase the construction of a theme park called Velocity Lake and build various rides in it. Here you can see me, speaking of rides, a ground view shot of uh, a couple of roller coasters, a little yellow one, but also the gigantic white BNM Giga, which of course we'll be continuing to work on in this episode. We're also going to do a little sort of segue to uh, the construction of a few things around another roller coaster in this park. Something that I've been mentioning a lot throughout this series, so some of the more dedicated viewers may know, or at least be able to make an educated guess as to what I might be about to talk about with that coaster. But um, I'll, I won't spoil the surprise. Uh, I'll discuss it as we get there. First things first, it's going to be the uh, first <laughs> first order of the day is sorting out the supports on the BNM Giga, which, as you can see, are somewhat lacking. So I decided at first maybe I'll try to try and do custom supports, but then I realised I really couldn't be bothered to invest the time into it. So then I tried seeing what the stock supports looked like, and as you can see, they are a little bit uh, excessive. And that's because this coaster is made out of the four meter smoothing technique, which means that all the pieces are you know four meter long, four meters long. So the game doesn't really expect you to make entire coasters in this way. So it kind of plops support for each segment of the coaster, which is obviously not realistic. So what it is, I just basically enabled all supports and then just incrementally went along and just disabled them for that first element. And then for the rest of the coaster, I decided to do it the other way around and just coast my way along. Every time I felt there should be a support, I just clicked toggle supports in the coaster track editor. And uh, that's that's how I did it. So obviously in places where there's lots of high G-forces or just when we're close to the ground, I added a few more supports than where we are, say, I don't know, at the top of an airtime hill. And uh, that's it there. So we're going to show a quick POV, not real time. This is sped up a little bit just because I've already shown the POV for this coaster quite a few times. And at the end of this video, we'll have a kind of a final POV with the station in place and all that. So I didn't really feel the need to put a real-time POV at this portion in the video, but this is just here to give you an idea of what the support structure now looks like. And I'm pretty sure this is it. Uh, I didn't really... Uh, I mean, stock supports, I know sort of the more elitist players look down on them, but I, I think they're pretty good for what they are. Like, I'm pretty happy with how the stock supports look. The only supports really that could be a lot better are the wooden supports. They don't really look like, you know, the GCI supports, but I guess it's hard to program, like procedurally generated GCI style wooden support so I guess I'll, 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 I'll let it slide I'll let it slide frontier but uh, hopefully if Planet Coaster 2 maybe they'll figure it out who knows anyway when it comes to uh, at least the BNM style of roller coaster I'm pretty happy with how the stock supports are for the most part so I was happy to just use the stock supports for uh, the entirety of this ride except of course for the lifter which again I imagine it must be quite hard to procedurally generate an, a BNM style lift hill and first drop in terms of the support. So I'm I'm quite happy to just set aside the time to make the supports custom. Here's a little ground view shot again, not at completely real time speed, just to give you an idea of how this thing would look from ground level. Of course, like I said in a previous episodes, uh, my intention is to cover this entire area with trees and forestation, so uh, so as to not only benefit the environment and try and neutralize. Uh, Velocity Lake's carbon footprint, but also because um, I quite like the idea of this whole thing being quite obscured. Like, you can't really see where it is. You can just see it cresting above the trees and then mysteriously diving down into the forest, and you can't really tell what's going on with the layout. I quite liked that as an idea. I did play around as well with having a little lake up here, but I decided, I think I in, the, in the end I decided against it. I don't, at least I don't recall there being water there now, so I'm assuming I decided against it. Yeah, I've got rid of it again, haven't I? So yeah, at this point I'm just sort of panning around seeing if anything else could be improved with the overall cosmesis of the white coaster, but you know what? I think it looks pretty good. Look at that. What a shot just there. In fact, what I am going to do <laughs> is I noticed that the actual... First of all, this bit actually as well isn't complete. It's not actually joining into the track. But secondly, the actual footer of the main drop support isn't really that realistic looking. Like, it would probably be better if there was an actual kind of steel and concrete footer in place to kind of sell, complete the illusion that this is a naturally... <laughs> that's a weird, a weird sentence now I say it out loud. A naturally occurring support in the game. I also noticed as well, actually, that there was a, a small gap in between the wooden, uh, in, in between the wooden, in between the white, and in between the black segments of the support. Again, we can just quickly go through and uh, sort it out, sort it out, mate. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd say that's pretty much sorted out right now, and that's pretty much all. Of, that's pretty much all the supports. Like I say, I'm saying pretty much all of the supports because the only thing we need to support now is the transfer track, which is technically a kind of different sort of support. Anyway, we're going to seamlessly crossfade across now. 
to another roller coaster, the Industrial Revolution coaster. I have said many a time in this series that one of the problems with this roller coaster is that the lateral g-forces are a bit too high on one specific corner. And during the construction of the BNM Giga, I became very, very obsessed with making sure all of the g-forces were realistic. And then I went through all of my other roller coasters and had a look at the g-forces as well. I noticed the g-forces on this corner were way, way too high when it when it comes to like lateral g-forces. A lot of people know that roller coasters should never really exceed sort of five or six g's in terms of the vertical g-forces, but lateral g-forces are a lot, lot lower. You rarely want to exceed 2.5, and generally that's quite a high number to aim for anyway. And the g-forces in this corner were very, very high. In order to get the lateral g-forces to a, to a, what I would consider an acceptable level, I had to bank it pretty much, you know, 90 degrees <laughs> to the ground. So uh, now this corner is more realistic. Of course, it's very, very jerky at the moment, so we quickly need to do some smoothing. This was built using the 4-meter smoothing technique, so it takes a little while to get it smoothed out, but you know, it's, it's worth it, it's worth it, and I guess it being only one corner, uh, it's not too bad. So you can see the camera sort of lurching about a bit. I was basically just surveying the ride, seeing if anything needed changing, like if I'd messed up any of the supports for that corner, although I think the supports on that corner were just like the stock supports. This bit, however, I noticed there was a bit of a break in the support work for the coaster track. I guess the pathway below it just meant that there wasn't really enough area for the natural supports to spawn because paths kind of trump the supports in terms of taking up space on the map. Like, if there's a path, it will just destroy the supports of the coaster over, the, over it. The supports won't just, I don't know, intersect the pathway, if that makes sense. You've got to use custom supports for things like that when there's lots and lots of pathway interaction on a ride such as this. And I'm going to show a quick POV, because I think it's been a while since you guys got to see this coaster. And now there's a few more things around it, admittedly not very close. But nonetheless, there are new things in the park. So the views will have changed since I last showed a POV of this ride. So I thought, hey, why not? Let's uh, showcase a ride that uses the 4 meter smoothing technique, but rather than going for very high velocity, big turns like the Giga, this is a much more compact, much more twisty, turny, sort of flippy, rolly kind of roller coaster. Oh, look, there's the, uh, the little fireworks you can say. And then we enter the new corner. Beautiful. And the rest. Just a nice little coaster around there. Look at that. Look at that skyline now. We've got the big RMC over there on the left. Also as well, we've got the giant white Giga Coaster, and there we are. That is pretty much now how the industrial coaster stands. Uh, how it stands to this day. So, oh, I say that. Am I about to do some more tweaking to this one? Okay, never mind. I thought I had, I was just going to leave the supports as they were, but I guess I wanted to add a few more supports to that corner, just to kind of make it a little bit more realistic, I guess. The supports that were there might have been destroyed now that we've reconfigured the cornering, so I'm just going to go ahead and place some new support so that, you know, it's supported. Uh, but I don't think there's that much more footage that we really need to talk about with this coaster. So I don't, I don't really want to start any new topics talking about this coaster because as soon as I start getting underway with a point, the footage is going to pan back back to the BNM Giga. Um, I mean, I don't really have much to say in terms of building this kind of support work structure. I'm assuming you can kind of figure out what I'm doing here based on, you know, the fact that you're watching the footage. Uh, yeah, 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 just, just colour matching it to the track. And that's it done, this whole corner. Am I going to do anything else on this part of the ride? I'm intrigued. I thought, I literally skimmed through the footage and I thought that this part of the video ended with the POV. So I guess, oh, now I am leaving. I'm just doing a little sort of kind of ground view walk back to the roller coaster that we were working on earlier in this episode. I think we're just going to crossfade it, to be honest, because we are angle day, mate. You know, we've got, I've got stuff to do. I've got a life to live. So we're going to just get back to work on, uh, you know, the main focus of this video. And we're going to start off by adding some lights to the lift hill. I always like adding these little lampposts to lift hills because, I don't know, there's something satisfying about it, I think, having the little lampposts during the ascent. It is a fairly realistic thing to have. A lot of big roller coasters have these lampposts during the lift hill climb. So I thought, you know what, it, it's, just nice. it's just a nice thing to add. So the first thing I did was I just used the uh, generic pole piece. Coloured it in black because it's obviously a stripey pole, but I didn't want it to be a stripey pole. I just wanted it to be a, a non-striped pole. And then I kind of made a sort of custom light bulb by clipping two of the gothic-style lamps into each other to get a nice sort of unique, bubbled, modern look. I made sure they were evenly spaced by basically placing a piece that's bound to the grid, in this case, one of the adobe walls. And, uh, and then I was just able to take that selection, copy it across, and not only would that make sure they were always perpendicular to each other, but they were all evenly spaced. 
one downside was that I thought it would be placed perpendicular to the lifter, but I guess that didn't quite work out. So I'm going to have to manually raise them up, deselecting each lamppost as it goes into its final position. But I can, as you can see, I had to sort of slightly offset them as we went up as well to the right, just because they weren't going up, you know, they weren't placed quite perpendicular to the lifter. Well, luckily, they are, you know, perfectly symmetrical, cylindrical structures, like they're the same along every single meridian. So even though their orientation is going to be a little bit different as you ascend, you can't visibly tell because, again, they're just cylinders. So that was one saving grace that saved me quite a headache if I were making, say, I don't know, lampposts with square poles or something like that. Anyway, here's a little shot of it, of the car climbing up the, the, uh, the lift hill during the night. You can get a sense of how it looks. I think it looks pretty nice. I hope you agree. And, uh, well, I thought it might be a good idea to do a quick pan around to just check the lighting of the rest of the park. Normally I would just cut out stuff like this because I'm just surveying and checking everything. But I think it's sometimes nice to showcase little glimpses of what the park looks like in its entirety. Just to showcase off, in this case, we're showcasing the lighting at night. You can get a... makes, I don't know, gives the park a whole new character, I think. One thing I did notice... I just can't bring myself to go through and do it, is I forgot to disable the headlights of all the cars in the car park. So it's a bit unrealistic in the sense that they've all got their headlights on all the time. So that was a bit of a whoop. So at some point, I'm going to have to go through and just manually deactivate all of their headlights. At least I think all the headlights are activated. I'm going to have to go manually and de deactivate all the headlights, which is going to be a big task. I don't know when I'm going to do it. Probably, I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to do it. <laughs> I don't know when I, whenever I can bring myself to face the uh, the emotional burden of doing such a boring task. Anyway, speaking of tasks, here I here you can see me doing a task. Thank you, thank you. This has been a great commentary. I'm glad you were all here for this. <laughs> uh, I'm building the station here. Now, I'm going to show the, the time lapse in pretty rapid you know, speed just because I don't end up keeping this station. But I think it was kind of an interesting build nonetheless. And at the end of this video, I'll be showcasing the POV in its entirety with this station attached. So I thought some people might want to just see the process of building a station. And then you've got a point of reference to compare it. When I showcase the actual proper station we end up going with next episode, you can see how it compares. Some of you may prefer this station. Some of you may prefer the station we end up going with. This is just kind of the first kind of concept. So the actual opening of the uh, station, and indeed the exit, at least when it comes to the actual roller coaster entrance and exit, not the, the footpath entrance and exit, I kind of went for a Fury 325 sort of style where it's this uh, diamond shaped aperture in the building. And then I just built the rest. Uh, I built the skeleton of it first of all using these scaffolding pieces that came with either the Ghostbusters DLC or just an update that came out around that time that just added them. I can't remember whereabouts these pieces come from. And then I just decided to fill in the gaps using these signpost pieces, which I think if you know if you get rid of the text or you know don't put any text on them and color them all white, it, they kind of have a nice sort of unique look to them. Uh, kind of gives this building a different sort of appearance to the other buildings in the park. And again, for the flat roof bits, I went with a slightly different kind of panel just to differentiate it from the uh, the roof itself. Like I kind of wanted, they look almost like white solar panels, look a bit sci-fi-y, a bit sort of a bit like radiator panels maybe. I don't know. Like I say, it's kind of a unique look. I wasn't uh, uh, that thrilled with the appearance of this station overall, hence why I never kept it. But they, these pathways, these will stay. So there you go. It was all worth it. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to stop talking and leave you with the POV with some music and all that to fully enjoy it. There'll be an end screen at the end of it, so you can just sort of figure out what that represents on the left-hand side. There'll be a link to the playlist, etc, etc, etc. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoy the POV, and I will see you next Wednesday, my dudes. <laughs>